I forgot my coffee. Super good. It's very good. Well, hi everyone. Um, nice to be able to chat with you again. Um, so today is the 4th of July. Five PM already, um, and the room situation is still very super hot. And maybe you still hear something ticking behind me. <laughs> that is because the AC is leaking. It is still leaking. Yes, it is still leaking. And um, I'm still not letting anyone the maintenance people to to visit me to to fix the ac basically i mean i'm okay with that that's a that's a very beautiful music right there right anyway so for the july today is a very special day especially for americans so i'd like to say happy independence day to my american friends and family I know that um, this situation is not easy for everyone. We are in such a challenging time and we have the same situation everywhere. So I'm hoping that this will be over very soon. So, so as you see, I'm wearing something white and blue. Um, it should have been red, white, and blue, but um, I cannot find any red uh, shirt or anything in my wardrobe. Because basically, I am not confident to wear um, bright colors. So, so because today is a very special day uh, for Americans, we are going to talk about something that is related to America. So I do believe that some of you are, especially the millennials and beyond, <laughs> you know. So I'm pretty sure that some of you are interested to. Uh, to further your study to continue your study abroad so one of the most popular destinations um, to study abroad is of course the u.s because it has um i would say it has a good education system and the most important thing for me personally um it gives me hands-on experience uh, related to cross culture um, understanding. Actually, I've been wanting to um, prepare this type of video um, because in my university, I also work um, in a language center, and one of the tasks for me is to be is um, to be able to assist those who are preparing to study, especially in the English speaking countries. So since I have the experience of studying in the U.S., I'd like to share with you uh, my experience um, starting from when I applied for the scholarships, the requirements, the, uh, the interviews, the preparation, the uh, how to cope with culture shock and things like that. So I hope this type of video is going to be able to help you, especially those who are interested to continue your study to the US. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and explore the website of the American Indonesian Exchange Foundation or AMINEF, um, Fulbright Indonesia. And we are going to go from there. As you see behind me is the Golden Gate. And you know that Golden Gate is the, the landmark of the state of California. So it's in San Francisco. So we're going to go ahead and explore the website. So as you can see, now we are exploring the website of the American Indonesian Exchange Foundation or AMINEF uh, for Bright Indonesia. For the first session, we're going to explore the master's degree scholarship. By the way, the what is it called? The sunset is really, really beautiful outside. It's just like exactly like the one behind me. Okay. Exactly like that. So anyway, 
So we explore this page, uh, Fulbright Masters, Fulbright Masters Degree Scholarship. Then uh, what we need to uh, what we need to see is first the specific requirement. So uh, normally for the Fulbright Masters Degree, you are going to have two years to uh, finish your study. So there is an exception in here, which is the medicine field. Um, so it is not over by uh, the scholarship. Uh, you can choose any study program except for medicine because it will be related to patient care um, or clinical patient contact. That's why it is not granted. You must hold a bachelor degree or in Indonesia, it is called S1 or S1, okay? Um, it doesn't matter which university or college you need to have a bachelor's degree, okay? I think that's clear enough. Um, the second one, the requirement related to GPA um, is a 3.0 from 4.0 scale. So if your GPA is below three, then I'm afraid you are not going to be able to apply for this uh, type of scholarship, okay? So you need to make sure that your GPA is 3.0 or above, all right? And then the next one, um, you must have a minimum TOEFL ITP score of 550 or IELTS equivalent. I'm pretty sure that you know what ITP is, right? So there are three types of uh, TOEFL tests or TOEFL, official TOEFL tests. The first one is ITP. It is actually the abbreviation of Institutional Testing Program. So it is a paper-based test. Um, and then you know that the IELTS is the International English Language Testing System. So usually if you want to go to the um, Commonwealth countries, such as um, Australia, the United Kingdom, and you know some parts of Canada, and um, it is also it is also acceptable if you want to study in the US, you know, this type of score is also acceptable. So we can see actually the equivalence of TOEFL and IELTS. So for the TOEFL paper-based TOEFL test or the ITP, or the ITP, okay, so 550, we can see here um, 550, and then there is also a computer-based test, which is not offered anymore. You can still take the IBT or the internet-based test um, everywhere. So 550 uh, ITP TOEFL score is more or less the same as um, a 79 to 80 uh, IBT TOEFL score and more or less it is the same as 6.0 IELTS uh, score. So we have finished the specific requirement. Now we're going to go to the general requirement. So um, if you would like to apply the style scholarship, you know, because this is the scholarship for Indonesian um, candidates, right? So you must be an Indonesian citizen and not a permanent resident of the U.S. or be currently living in the U.S. So if you were born in the U.S. or you, um, you have a green card or if you are currently residing in the U.S., then you're not going to be eligible to apply for this type of scholarship. And it is very important that you uh, should possess leadership qualities and show experience in community service. I would like to highlight this because sometimes um, students forget about something like this. So they consider that the most important thing in uh, studying is the GPA or, you know, being smart or, you know, being able to demonstrate um, high GPA. 
but that's not going to be enough. If you're thinking about applying a scholarship, then you are going to be required to demonstrate your quality in um, your leadership quality. Uh, you need to be able to show your experience in a community service. So uh, it reminds me of some students who are currently working with me in the uh, Center for Language and Culture. I do believe that um, what they are doing at the moment can be categorized as you know, community service because actually they're assisting um, their fellow students, they're assisting the, the faculty, they're assisting international students. So basically they're doing something um, that will help the institution or other people to, to grow. You know, so this is some kind of community service. So they should be happy. So if you guys are thinking about applying this type of scholarship, you are on the right track. Okay. And then the next one, um, you need to have prepared or showing that you have prepared something related to your commitment to the chosen field of study. So for example, if you're thinking about, you know, um, choosing education as your field of, as your uh, prospective field of study, then you need to be able to demonstrate your interest, your commitment to education by, well, one of them is by volunteering, you know, like assisting um, other students, um, being able to be involved in, um, you know, some kind of education related activities um, that is uh, probably sponsored by the, your university. So I'm pretty sure that there are so many, so many activities in your university or the community around you that um, you can be involved in. All right. And then, uh, of course, because you are going to study in the English speaking country, you know, in the US, then you need to be proficient in English, you know, other than by demonstrating your TOEFL score, your IELTS score, you need to be able to demonstrate your ability to communicate in English uh, communicatively. Because um, I would say that 99%, 99.9% .9 of your activities in the US are going to be are going to involve, you know, communicating in English, you know, ranging from your, um, your class, your, your academic related activities or outside campus. If you are involved in, you know, like a community, um, community related activities or social related activities or, you know, professional, you know, related activities, then um, you are going to use this language, you know, most of the time. And one thing that you need to remember that um, probably um, you're thinking that you're going to talk to, you know, Americans most of the time, but probably not. And then the next one, you need to have an outstanding academic record. When we talk about the general or the basic requirements, we talk about the GPA, right? You need to be able to convince, you know, the... Uh, selection panel that you are going to be able to realistically accomplish full-time graduate study or conduct research in the US. So the next point is, I would say, very, very important for the candidates. So being able to show the commitment that you are going to return to Indonesia to share the knowledge to share your accomplishment in the U.S. Um, to your people, to help your people develop, to help your country develop. And uh, the last one, it is also related to the previous point that um, you are willing to work at least five years before, re before retirement in the field that you choose after finishing your program. So now we're going to talk about why an applicant is not, um, is not eligible. So the first one, if you are an employee or your close family 
or you are a close family member of an employee or dependent of an employee of Aminev or the American Indonesian Exchange Foundation. For example, your parents or your brothers or your sisters um, work for the American Indonesian Exchange Foundation or the U.S. Embassy or the U.S. Department of State, then you are not going to be eligible to apply this scholarship. Or if you are currently pursuing another degree in the U.S., I believe. I will need to check this one. But I believe it is in the U.S. So if it is like in Indonesia, I think it would be okay. So you, you are going to you know, reapply for another degree, right? Um, or if you're receiving another scholarship at the time of the application. So I think it should be some kind of a, like a, like a formal, like an official scholarship. Uh, so if it is a scholarship from your school, from your institution, from your university, then I think that's going to be okay. But if it is another, uh, another scholarship, um, from, uh, from another scholarship provider, like a, you know, international scholarship provider, for example, from the, uh, the um, Australian Award Scholarship from Australia, or the uh, British um, Schiffning, or the, uh, what is it called, like the one from, the, from Germany, I forgot. I forgot what, what it's called, but I think it's the DAAD or something. So you're not going to be eligible uh, for this scholarship. Or if you are pursuing another similar program for a double degree, so sometimes an Indonesian institution is going to have some kind of a cooperation with uh, some uh, institutions in the U.S. And, um, you know, students are doing like double degree um, um, in, those, uh, in, in those colleges or universities, then uh, those people are not going to be eligible for this scholarship. And the next one is going to be for the submission requirement. Everything written in English. And of course, the interview is going to be in English too. So you are going to complete the application form, including a one-page study objective. So what is a study objective? If you want to know what a study objective is, we are going to talk about that in a, you know, in a separate video, in another video. I promise. Also, one page of personal statement. Also, I'm also going to talk about this one in particular in another video. Usually, this will be the biggest problem for us Indonesians. You know, academic writing is no joke, right? Okay. And then bibliography of your written published work. So uh, if you have written papers for your undergrad, you know, in your undergrad study, so that's why uh, even though you are still undergrad, you need to think about publishing your work. I'm pretty sure that there are also journals, you know, um, organized by your university. So you need to make use of that, all right? You can also collaborate with your lecturers, you know, to uh, do some kind of research and publish it in, you know, uh, journals. And then, uh, the an academic writing sample. So this is a paper that you write for your uh, for your classes. Um, and then the copy of most recent TOEFL ITP or IELTS scores. Um, so what is meant by most recent is less than two years old. Two letters of reference from usually it will be from your uh, ex thesis advisor. Or if you have worked when you apply for the scholarship, but this is going to be from your supervisor. So this is going to be, or if you, uh, or if you already work when you apply for the scholarship, then it's going to be from your um, supervisor. I would like to highlight this in particular because sometimes students forget about. Um, the importance of a letter of reference or letter of recommendation from your, especially your, uh, especially your um, lecturers or your advisor, your thesis advisor. So you need to be able to uh, at least give a good impression when you work, when you are involved in the academic related uh, activities with 
your lectures or with your thesis advisor so that later on when you need a letter of reverence then your advisor or your lecturer are going to be able to grant this letter easily you know it is not easy to get students letter of reverence because when advisors or lecturers will be working with a lot of students so they're not going to remember one by one who is who you know so you need to be you need to stand out you need to be a flamingo in the flock of pigeons <laughs> you know you need to be able to demonstrate a sophisticated work academically to be able to secure a letter of reference okay and then a copy of academic transcript and diploma um, it's going to be in original language, in both original language and um, English translation. You need to provide an English translation. Usually your university is going to, uh, to provide this type of service, right? But if not, you can go to the sworn translator and then copy your valid identity document. It can be your KTP, your, um, uh, what is it called? The ID the identification card, the ID card, uh, or passport, and a curriculum vitae. It's getting dark, guys, so I hope, I hope it is still okay. I mean, it doesn't matter if you cannot see me because I'm not very important. I'm not as important as this document. Does it make any sense? And then this is super important. Do not procrastinate. So the deadline for the submission of the uh, application materials for the program is February 15th. But you need to prepare ahead of time because you are going to submit a lot of documents, right? And they need to be perfect. You know, letter of reverence, usually it will take a long time, uh, hopefully not, depending on your communication with your, uh, you know, your ex-lecturers or your ex-advisor or your employer. And only shortlisted applicants will be notified and interviewed. Only those who satisfy the requirements um, are going to be uh, invited for interview. So interview is the next process, you know, so the documents process is going to be the very first process of the scholarship uh, application. So the candidate should complete the application form, um, which can be downloaded from this website. Um, there is a link here. This is the link. Okay, you need to click this link. Whoops. You need to click this link later and then submit all the documents that we have discussed previously uh, and printed them and mail them to Aminef office. Okay, so we have explored and we have discussed the uh, requirements and how to start the application for the master's degree uh, from the Fulbright program. So if you're interested to apply for this scholarship, then you need to go ahead and explore the website and let me know in the comment section if you have questions. And hopefully we can also address your questions in another video. So I'm gonna see you in another video where we can probably talk about uh, further requirements and we can explore the documents one by one and um, probably uh, some kind of tutorial on how to complete the application documents. Um, don't forget to give me thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. And also activate the notification bell so every time I upload a video, you're gonna get notified. So I'm gonna see you in another video. Stay safe, take care of yourself and each other. Bye-bye.